But I think some people might have been surprised the fact that tens of thousands turned up. Now, I wasn't surprised by that, and I'm sure you feel the same way. Not really. I mean, um, we just expected lots and lots of people to be there, and it was just where that ended, at what figure. And so it wasn't really a surprise to see 50,000 people, because I've travelled the world with them, and uh, I know the following he gets. Um, my first one ever was in 90 or 91. We went to Japan and to the Suzuki Yatar, and Joey and I were teammates, and I thought this was great, getting to Japan. And uh, we were walking across the paddock, and it's a pretty long walk from the hotel complex across to the track. And all of a sudden, I, I didn't know why, but there was just we were black with Japanese people. And uh, I'm sort of, what are these people doing? It was all, Joey Dunlop, Joey Dunlop. And I, all right, and I'm standing back watching. It was just, there was these people in the middle of Japan just were swarming two Irish men, but it was really joy. And five Formula One world titles, which is tremendous. But th the lovely thing was, it didn't really change joy. Didn't change him at all. And uh, I think that's what bugged so many people, really. I've spoke to Roger Marshall. I've spoke to other I old F1 Roger riders Roger. now. And uh, they just they couldn't believe him. And they were peeved off with him because uh, they'd be out in foreign countries. All these top English and world riders would be into their fitness, into their training. You know, they'd be in bed at 10 o'clock at night. They'd have all the proper food. They'd be... No drinking, no smoking. No <laughs> drinking, nothing. And Joey would be up. Of course, he'd have a few beers. And I don't know what time we'd ever get to bed at, or he'd be stuck in the garage, drinking beer, looking at the bikes to 3 or 4 in the morning. 10 o'clock practice, they would turn up at 9. Joey would turn up at 5 to 10. He would look scruffy. He would, you know pull the ladders on, he would get on the bike, and they'd be so psyched up, and he would still beat them. Do the best. Yeah. And they couldn't believe it. How could this man not sleep, you know, <laughs> drink, smoke, and still beat us? <laughs> he was a, a superb person. He did know what he was doing, and uh, I mean, my respect as a rider to him, who else could possibly ever go to the TT, win on a 125 machine, jump on a 1,000cc machine and win, and uh, do it in style? I mean, he's been honourable to everyone.